Good morning, everyone. This is Jeffy Kennedy, author of fantasy romance and romantic fantasy. I'm here with my first cup of coffee. Mm, delicious. Today is you're going to say it with me. Today is Friday. Woo-hoo-hoo. It's also October 22nd uh, birthday of Leo Kennedy my late stepfather who um originated the I mean he didn't originate but he's the one who started it in our family the it's Friday uh, which he would he was a vice principal of a middle school and he would do that in the morning PA on Friday mornings the kids loved it faculty loved it too he said the faculty loved it <sighs> you could see the if you're on video the beautifully lit um crab apple tree behind me the colors are really nice this year really good fall colors we don't always get great fall colors sometimes the uh the nip happens too fast and the wind blows the leaves away but um it's a good color year for sure still a few grapes hanging on to the grapevine but the uh the grape barber is pretty denuded at this point but you could see some of the the fall color behind me and the rest of the garden. Mm, it's good. So um yesterday ended up being a better day um as far as writing uh it I didn't think it was going to be I spent some time at writer coffee uh doing <laughs> writer coffee things I, I had a little bit of a rant which was kind of funny but and I I don't know if I could say anything about the thing I was ranting about um see I I am tactful there are some things that that I don't say uh yeah I just don't see how I can even say something nebulous about it but it's one of those things that uh, I could vent to my writer friends about which is is always good although I think I can say this part I was talking about uh an essay of mine that was rejected and the reasons that it was rejected and there was a new guy there meeting with us kind of um auditioning to to be part of the the crit side of what we do um auditioning is probably the wrong word um it's more like the are you a crazy human being or not because none of us knew him so you know he kind of got thrown into the deep end with me ranting but I was telling the story about this essay being rejected by a, a very big publisher and some of my ensuing drama with it they are paying me a kill fee and I a kill fee is um for those of you who don't know like if they say they're going to publish something of yours um and this happens a lot with short work especially nonfiction you know like if they say oh we're gonna publish this thing of yours and then they decide not to then they pay you a fee because they killed the story um basically paying you for your time uh and the kill fee is fifty dollars which is you know better than stick in the eye as my grandmother would say uh and it would which is kind of funny because if they'd published it it would have only been seventy five dollars so when they said well you know we didn't like the essay for these reasons but um you know if you want we can pay you the kill fee and I was like yeah I want pay me the goddamn kill fee you know it's so funny because I know this is something I have ranted about before and this is a sideline rant but more and more and more I'm seeing places um suggesting that maybe I wouldn't want to take the money <laughs> well if you want you know or um you know like I you know had my thing earlier this summer with um you know being asked to speak for free and being annoyed because they said oh well you know most of our speakers graciously donate their time uh, and I'm hearing that like every time somebody says well you know we could pay you this or you could donate that back 
<laughs> you keep saying things like that. And it's like, where, where is this coming from? Why are you guys feeling like, um, it's perfectly cool to ask people to volunteer to not be paid. Kill fees used to be standard business practice. And so, I mean, it's to their credit that they are paying a kill fee, but I thought it was funny that they were like, but you know, I guess we could pay you a kill fee if, if you feel like that's something you, you want or need, you know, it's only $50 and it's like, yes, I want my $50. Cause I'm annoyed that you guys killed this essay. And that's what the part I can't talk about is why they did, but they be, it, it ended up being really difficult to get this kill fee. I, I had to go through all sorts of hoops, you know, and it was like, I worked really hard <laughs> to get my $50. And, uh, yesterday I had, it been more than a month since I'd finally finished all the paperwork. So I'd inquired about it yesterday and they came back with the, huh, we don't know what happened there, but now they've tracked it down and corrected the error, uh, which I think was, we were hoping you would forget about it. Um, maybe that's being ungenerous, but I think a lot of these businesses now, uh, you know, go with this model where they like, um, you know, charge you the monthly subscription fee, hoping that you'll forget that you're paying it. Uh, they delay refunding you stuff, hoping that you forget you're supposed to get the refund. Um, you know, they delay on something like the $50 kill fee, hoping that you'll forget about it. And I think people often do. And, you know, and there are probably times that I wouldn't have, except that to me, this is a little bit of blood money and it's like, I want my $50. And I'm going to, I don't know. I'm, I might go buy a new Halloween decoration with it or something. Um, I also need a new cell phone, all of these things, but, um, you know, it's like, anyway, enough on that. So now let's see, I got off on my tangential rant. Oh, so I was talking about why the essay was rejected and the reasons I was irritated about that. And the new guy said, um, who, and you know, and this is the first time he's met me. So <laughs> I did apologize to him. I said, I'm really, you know, apologize that this is your first time meeting us and that I'm off on this ramp, but you know, better to find out now. Right. And, you know, and he's a thoughtful guy and he thought about it and he said, well, I suppose the takeaway from this is It was something, um, how did he phrase it? You know, like we can't always expect our work to be accepted and sometimes, you know, rejection happens. It was something like that. And, uh, and I said, well, you know, I don't want to be all, I disagree. (laughs) Although I do disagree. You know, I said, sometimes the takeaway is I said, I, what I think the takeaway here is, is that work is very subjective and that, uh, one person's lens on the world makes them see things in a very particular way that blinds them to the, to what other people see. And that very often our work is rejected for that reason, because art is subjective, right? Writing is subjective, evaluating it is subjective. So. I could see the wheels turning in his head a little bit on that. Um, it's a different perspective, right? When you, uh, when you think about rejection in terms of, oh, you know, big muckety muck rejected me. Therefore I am not worthy. And, and I need to learn to accept the fact that I'm not worthy and do better. And, and that's valid. I mean, we've, we've been there and, and I do think it's important to recognize that sometimes our work is not up to snuff in this case, (laughs) I'm, I'm verging into arrogance here. And, and I do try to check myself on that, but in this case, it was really good essay. Sorry, you guys, it was a really good essay. I still think it's a good essay. Um, but it was content that the editor objected to, um, particular ideas that didn't fit their ideas. And that's a different thing. 
And sometimes you just have to deal with the fact that, um, that you don't agree, right? So there I'm loosening up my neck. <sighs> Can I get my $50 kill fee? I'm also, um, submitting the essay other places. So we shall see. If it gets universally rejected, that's one thing, but, um, you know, certain ideas become fashionable and they become fashionable in certain circles. And, and I should qualify too, that this essay has been read by other people, uh, some of whom come at things with a very critical lens and they think it's good. So it's not just me being like, my work is amazing because I do think that that's a problem, especially for authors who become very successful. Um, mostly I think it's people who are way more successful than I am. Like, um, I was not going to name, I won't name that name, Pat Conroy, you know, Pat Conroy, uh, is a brilliant writer, undoubtedly a brilliant writer. Uh, the, the Prince of Tides was an incredible book. There was a, a couple of years there that I gave a copy of that book to like everyone I knew for every occasion. And I've talked about it often, but you know, like reading beach music, I was so excited to read beach music and it, I was so disappointed in that book because it, it was incredibly bloated. It needed editing. It could have been cut by a third. I've never gone back to look at other people's reviews, but you know, <clears throat> there are many, many stories of various authors who get, and, and I am not going to, to uh, call anybody out in particular, but you guys can probably think of some, right? Who become very, very successful and are, are known for writing really, really long books. And I think there's a real danger in getting to think that everything you write is precious, you know, that, uh, you know, it's like that I use it in workshops. Sometimes the Ryan Gosling lit agent, you know, it's, I have a file folder called my baby's darlings, mad precious, you know, the darlings being every word that you ever write and maybe had to cut out mad precious, um, you know, and you can get to that point where you feel like everything you write is incredibly valuable and that you can write books that are as long as you want to make them because nobody gets to edit you. And that's a really dangerous place to be as a creative. Um, because none of us are, are in that position where everything we write is perfect and wonderful. And certainly not when you go on at length. Um, there's a, author who is a very famous best-selling, uh, you know, huge fortune author who came out with a new book in a series. I think it's funny cause I have on my hoodie under my wrap here and it makes me look a little hunchback. So I'm going to have to fix this. Sorry. I can't, uh, can't stand that. This is why it's not good for me to look in the video. Um, I'm sure there are people, I mean, I I'm always amazed now that I've been doing these videos so that I could like see people doing videos where they like, don't fidget with stuff. And I'm, I'm not there yet. I'm not that, uh, polished of an entertainer. <laughs> Shocking, right? All right. Now I distracted myself. Um, oh, famous author come out with a new installment in her you know, hugely best-selling series, highly anticipated. And the book rather famously is, is so long that the publisher had to use, um, different paper to make it thin enough because once you get to a certain point on the binding, the glue won't hold if it's like a trade paperback book. So no, you guys are going to be able to figure out who I'm talking about if you're in the, you know, those fan circles, but, um, this author very famously had to, or famously within our circles anyway, you know, talked about having to go through and weed out something like, I don't know, like a thousand words, it, not that many, right? You know, I, I try to write a thousand words for an, in an hour, bless you all who said that you were impressed at 
what I was writing. Um, I know I should be grateful for that, but I really like to get my 3000 words a day in three hours worth of writing and I get cranky if I don't. So I did a little bit better yesterday. I think I figured out what this novella is going to be about. I think I found the beginning. I've written like 5000 words and I think I found the beginning. Um, sometimes it works that way. It's, it makes me annoyed because I feel like I wasted time, but I think I'm there now. Uh, and I, I knew it might go that way. So anyway, um, a thousand words, like, um, my novels are typically a hundred thousand words and that's like 400 pages. And I think, um, this book ended up being something like a thousand pages. And so that's, I don't know. I, I seem to recall it was something like 300,000 words because they used really small type and they used this really thin paper. Um, it may have been closer to 400,000 words. So anyway, out of this, the author had to cut like a thousand words, um, in order to shrink it down enough to meet those glue metrics on the binding and, and had to go through and rather, you know, cut those darlings, you know, cutting things like that, you know, and stuff and, and how it took so long. And then I've heard other people talk about the book and saying that there are repeats in the book that there's, you know, like repeated scenes and fluff scenes and extra stuff that, um, you know, like a good editor, a good ruthless editor would go through and, you know, could have cut that book down considerably. Uh, but nobody edits this author. And, and I did see some other authors talking about it and saying, well, where was the editor? You know, how come this wasn't cut down some? And it's like, well, you know, some of these very famous authors too take advantage of being able to push publishing deadlines. And sometimes they turn those books in so close to the deadline that there's no time for a content edit and nobody's going to worry about it because the book sells or the author sells so well that it's like, okay, we'll get that right to press and, oh, wait, we have to cut, you know, a thousand words is, um, you know, like three or four pages. We need to cut like three or four pages and that's it. Could you pretty please find, you know, it's like, wow. So the moral of the story there, what is our takeaway? Um, you know, I think it's, I think our moral is clear. I was going to say something else. I was thinking about it as I was talking about all of that, uh, something to do with the conversation I was having with Dorinda. I don't remember it now. So I guess, uh, I'm going to go get to work on this, uh, at least feeling better that the novella is coming along now. And, um, yeah, I will remind you all that first cup of coffee is part of the frolic media podcast network, and you will find more podcasts that you love at frolic.media slash podcasts. And I will talk to you all on Monday. You all have a wonderful weekend. I hope you get to enjoy some fall color or spring color, depending on which hemisphere you're in. And, um, hope you get to do something that brings you joy. You all take care. Bye-bye.